All right, we're going to start off today uh, wrapping up really our, our engines here. We're using our Ninja cutaway here. So for clutch installation, you guys got a lab here. Where there's quite a bit of uh, intense inspection and measurement on this. And I'm going to go over these different things here. But first off, I just want to take a look at some things of what you can get into trouble. We, we have, in this course, we've had all these different kinds of oil pumps and all these different kinds of clutch baskets. And what I wanted to uh, make a point of here is on the oil pump drive gear, as I'm sliding the clutch basket into that, you can see the matching gear that's going to engage here. Okay, so if you're pushing this on and it's not going, you might have to reach underneath and slide this over to get it to engage. Does that make sense? Yeah. Some of you guys have the chain, like on the Hondas that had the four holes back here that you had to insert that special gear. That's a consideration I want you guys to be thinking about today. And then on like George's, on your GSXR, you have a big bushing in the center like this and your big ring gear is actually covered up by the case. And what you have to do on yours, uh, matter of fact, this is the same way on this one, is do you see how I can't pull it out? I need to make sure and get this, uh, this bushing out first. And I want to show you in the Kawasaki, we ran into a problem a couple years ago where this, this one here, looking at it intentionally and uh, trying to say, well, is there anything different about it? As I flip it over, do you see how there's no holes? Mm -hmm. Man, holy cow, guys, look what happened a couple years ago. Uh, we were trying to get this out, and I don't remember if it says in the manual to thread in like a five millimeter bolt or something in here, and you put the bolt in here, and let's go to the motor and see where this is installed. So this is up against here, and you're supposed to put a bolt in here and then pull it out. Well, when we first got this motor, it was just everything was seized up and being a pain. We didn't have a five millimeter bolt, so thinking that I was a genius, which I'm um, absolutely not apparently, uh, what I did have though was a five millimeter tap. Can you actually see in there, when you watch this video, you'll see that uh, there's the broken off piece of the tap. While pulling it out, uh, the, too much side pressure was put on it and the, it, it snapped the tap off and left it in there. Mm -hmm. Not a good day, okay? So we, it, this comes on off fairly easy. You really only need one hole and you'll, uh, I'll model it here real quick. And I've only left this in here just for demonstration purposes and kind of a reminder of what not to do. Taps are pretty fragile. I'd probably get, you know, get down to bomb guards and get the right little uh, five millimeter bolt or whatnot. But let's talk about where we can get into trouble. What happens if you do that? You really screw it. I get it out. You don't. Yeah. You don't. Yeah, and you'll sit here and you'll Crap sit and mess on. it around quite a bit. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to insert this in here. You guys are going to be doing assembly lube on all your shafts and whatnot. So I'm going to reach underneath here and try and get that that gear to engage. And it is. It's engaged on the clutch basket there. I'm going to go in the right direction here. Whole assembly might be easier. set it in and now my clutch basket is in place here. So what I definitely want to do too is let's focus the camera in here and decide if we need light. Do you see how when I rock the clutch basket the gear rocks too? Okay so I know that I have good engagement. The other thing is is this bushing here sits, it's thicker than the needle bearing that we slid in there. Okay so this bushing is wider, like I said, than this needle bearing. Those two can't kiss. As we keep assembling things, this is that washer that's often missed for the uh, inner hub here. And my motor's tipped a little bit here. I always want to make sure that as I'm turning this inner hub, it is not grabbing onto the basket. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, before we get into like total installation, I want to take a look here and you'll see what I'm going to do here. I've kind of gotten the habit of just rocking that back and forth and it slides it out and I don't need a special tool to do that. I want to take a look at the basket itself and uh, notice some things about it. You guys remember talking about these springs? Mm -hmm. Does anybody remember what they, they do? Yeah. It's for when you're on and off the throttle. Okay, Excel and decel, you're absolutely right. It creates a little cush drive. So one thing you want to do is you want to grab, the, and be careful, these can be razor sharp, is I want to take and, can you see that moving? Mm -hmm. So you'll notice now that this piece is not this piece, that's two separate pieces, and then what do we call these type of fasteners? Rivets. They're rivets, right? So this is all riveted together. So what that does is it creates a cush. This has excessive play. Okay, that's a lot. When you can sit and move it around that much, 
that means that there's a lot of play in there. When you get, engage and disengage the clutch, you're going to have a lot of movement before you get to fill the, the back of the tire. And this, since this was a race bike, uh, a road race bike, that's one of the problems over time. I mean, this basket just needs replaced for multiple reasons. But that is on your lab sheet. That is the springs I'm talking about for the quote unquote cush drive. The other thing that we could see in here, it's not the end of the world, but it is starting to get bad here, is we've got where we have the the evidence of the clutch plates, the fibers here that have kind of dug into these grooves. So that'd be a good reason for a replacement. But what really uh, caused the death of this clutch basket is right here. Do you see where we have an ear broke off? Oh yeah. yeah. The big thing about that is what's that do to the balance of this now? Completely throw it off. Yeah, completely throw it off. So this is junk. It's just a demonstration motor for us, but those are the things that we would do. Since we're making a, a video here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, point out a way that you would check a good clutch basket is put a fiber in it and you want to take and load it. Now watch my technique here. Look at this. I'm holding the clutch basket. If I even need to get it against something to kind of help support it, that's fine too. But so I'm firmly holding the basket and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the plate in one direction and go up and down. I'm going to rotate the other direction and go up and down to basically side load the plate in there. So I'm tight to my right side now and I'm gonna go up and down, and I can feel it's notchy or it's dragging. What's the customer gonna complain about? Dragging. Not releasing. Yeah, or it might be that they're sitting at a stoplight and they pull the clutch and their bike wants to creep. It like wants to drag forward on them, okay? It's a couple of different complaints. So I would need to do this uh, on here for the fibers, and then I would do the same thing on my clutch pass, uh, pack for my inner hub, and uh, you can see here this clutch get hot. Oh, yeah. A couple of spots. So this thing's probably warped, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to support this here. I'm going to side load to the, to the right. Oh, man, it's really notchy, okay? You can see the notches. Yeah, it's really aggressive on there. So this, this whole clutch is just something that's in replacement. All right, here's the new stuff. You guys, I, I'm not going to get into the whole process for the video <clears> because we've done this in our two-stroke. For you YouTube viewers, if you want to revisit our two-stroke engine class, uh, on our channel, on our playlist, you can uh, find a bunch more clutch information. So let's deal with what's new. Now all of a sudden we got these. Sometimes these are held in by uh, a snap ring, like your CB750 I'm pretty sure has a snap ring holding this in place. And what we have to notice is that one washer, this one in particular, is perfectly flat on both sides, okay? But what we notice about this one is it's curved. You guys see that? Yeah. Okay, so this curve one, what that does is as you engage and disengage this whole clutch pack, so as this moves back and forth, it'll flatten that spring out to some extent because we're compressing it. And what that does is help the clutch be quieter and not have the rattle. Mm. So like a dirt bike clutch is pretty noisy and it, it, it'll, and the other thing is when these rattle around, what are they doing to the hub, the inner hub in the clutch basket? Right. You know. So this is a anti-rattle or anti-vibration um, spring right there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna look for those. In your service manual, you're gonna see something where they show this like this, and then they're gonna show the spring that goes here, something like this. That's the little sandwich. You can see that, okay. All right, good stuff. You put it in backwards, what's gonna happen? It's not gonna do what it's supposed to do. It's not gonna do what it's supposed to do, and then uh, problems just arise. So let's let the engineers be engineers, and let's just duplicate what they do. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go ahead here and uh, reinsert this. Couple of things, and make sure my, I need this guy in here. Installation of clutch plates. Guys, I, I'm going to be honest with you here. I, I, I don't know everything. <laughs> You're shocked, right? Yeah. Uh, there, there's things I don't know. Don't if anybody's on YouTube out there, man, I'm doing a shout out here. You know, uh, we know that these are considered to be like oil groove channels or whatnot, but some manuals will tell us to take, and Yamaha's famous for this. The, the most recent one I can think of is the R1, where on the same plate, some will have only one notch and some will have two. And they will tell you 
to put them in in a certain pattern, but there's no rationale behind, well, why do we do that? Why do we put it here, there, whatnot? Another thing as far as clutch plate installation that could be an issue is you'll notice here I have all these grooves. So as I stack my, as I stack my uh, assembly up, I'm going to be building it in this direction, and then a lot of top plates are offset one plate. Okay, and you'll see this one here looks like it's not fitting or it's either wore out or drag or something. But when you see that other notch here, this is a, a potential for that. The other thing that you can run into is the plates can also be of a different uh, width or thickness due to the outside plate might be its own part number. Another thing that I'm going to be looking for right now is I'm looking to see if any of these plates are a different thickness here, and I'll explain why, is so that it can fit around the spring. Do you see that? So a lot of times the bottom plate will be a different part number, and then the rest of them will have the whole thickness of this. Now this apparently looks like these don't matter in our Ninja Pack here. They're all the same, but for other clutches you might have to worry about that. So a lot of attention to detail, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, with our basket in place here, we talked about how important this washer is. We'll go ahead and set that in there. Uh, for us, we're just, you know, hand assembling this. We have, like I said, assembly grease on this. Uh, you guys, uh, just like I said in our two-stroke video, take a look at this washer. You see where it says outside? Yep. Because this washer is one that's like this. So here's my hub and here's my, uh, here's my washer, if you will, like this. And when I tighten my nut down on top of this, that's going to flatten out. Actually, this, this washer is more like this. So when I tighten the nut down, it's going to flatten the washer, creating a spring action. That is my lock nut. So on this particular engine, it wouldn't surprise me if no Loctite is called for this fastener. So that as I compress that, that's what's going to happen. The other thing about this uh, engine that I believe is a no lock Loctite, I bet this was a one-time use nut. Can you actually see where this has got a crimp mark right there? And there's a crimp mark right there. There's usually three of them. There's, there's barely one there. Steeped. Yep, the nut itself was manufactured and then crimped to crush these top couple of threads so that it forces itself to drag across the shaft. But when you loosen the nut, what do you do to the crimp? You, really open it you widen it. So this, was, this would have been a one-time use nut. Make sense? So washer on. You guys remember what the tool looks like to tighten, uh, to tighten this up properly? Yep. Mm -hmm. Describe Vice it. Grip. Like Jaws on it. Yeah, who made that? Anybody remember? Motion yeah, Motion Pro. So we're just, like I said, for demonstration purposes, going to uh, put this together this way. So we'd use that tool. And what's what did I say I, I more prefer? Strap wrench. Can on this one, because we got to uh, hold this. The plates that actually have a, a rod welded to it. Yeah, you could take one of these steels, uh, an old used one, and you could weld get one to start on here. This is a little hard when it's dry. Okay, then I'd weld a handle on here and that would hold this, allowing me to torque that. Now they make these, I know EBC's making a bunch of them, uh, where they already have a handle welded to it, and they're pretty cheap anymore, I think about 20 bucks. So they do it for all the really popular, popular models. Okay, so let's look at our assembly here. You guys on your uh, lab sheets, we would look at measuring the thickness of this. Do you see where you could be deceived on whether you measure it? Wear pattern. Yeah, I mean, if you grabbed onto this and didn't grab onto just the fiber, you're going to get a false measurement. Do you think the width of these are an important uh, measurement for the manual? Yeah. And the width of in here? Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build this assembly up. We'll look at the manual here, and I believe there's no uh, rationale behind the, uh, the oil marks there. Uh, as I'm looking at this the last time that we're together, Every clutch plate out there, this is very hard to do without filling it, is this is a really sharp edge on there, okay? This edge here, I don't know if you can see this in the video, is just rounded off. Typically, it's, it's a real common practice that no matter if you do all flats in or all rounded edge in, you just keep it consistent. I've seen more vehicles come from the factory with the flat side facing in. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to stack my uh, assembly up here. And I have to feel for that edge. OK. 
Okay, I would go ahead and uh, keep going here. A lot of times on the outer pressure plate, so this is really a steel, isn't it? Yeah. But what's it made of? Aluminum. Aluminum, but it's it's referred to, it's, its job is that it's the, the outside part of the uh, the pressure plate here. Do you see how that actually locks in to the hub? Yep. Because it is part of the clutch basket and it has to slide across here. Okay, so if you look at the depth of those teeth and realize that the last little bit of this is the same amount this has to slide back and forth. When we engage and disengage the clutch, so this spins on that roller bearing, okay? And when we engage and disengage this, <clears throat> it has that drag on there too of the loading and side loading. So this is a place I think is often not inspected. And you can actually see this one has been wore out so much it's actually dug a groove in there. That's supposed to be smooth. That that groove is not supposed to be on there. Jim, fill that with your finger now. So this whole clutch is, is definitely in bad shape. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to measure our springs for two things. We're going to measure their length this way and then we put them on a surface plate with a uh, straight edge across it and we're going to look to see whether the spring is lazy and wants to fall over to the side. Those are two different ways that we can uh, inspect that. The thing to keep in mind if you're dealing with dirt bikes and four wheelers and even a lot of street bikes, you can buy an aftermarket spring set for around 10 bucks. When you look at the cost of labor, it's, it seems pretty foolish to to measure those unless you're trying to look for some diagnostic failure or something. The negative is though that most all of your aftermarket springs are heavy duty. So if you have someone that's just riding this for a street bike, they do not need to have all the extra strain on their wrist for the clutch pull. You're not really helping them in that manner. And um, so you might want to consider just replacing it with uh, OEM springs. As we uh, tighten this uh, outer uh, pattern down, when uh, when this is fully assembled, you know, I guess I can just slap this together quick. I'll go ahead and keep these uh, lined up on these grooves here just to be intentional. Okay, here's something else in your lab sheet. Uh, soaking these. Have you ever heard about this? You guys mm -hmm. been reading about this or anything? So on street motorcycles with a wet clutch, the recommendation is to soak the plates. And usually you want to soak them, you know, even a couple hours ahead of time. What I like to do is if I know I'm doing a clutch the next day, I will take a, a bucket like we just had out here, those little shoe boxes, and soak these in transmission oil or the engine oil that it's being used in the vehicle and uh, let them soak overnight. You don't have to soak the steels, but should you lubricate them? Yes. Oh, yeah. You do, you don't want the steels perfectly dry, like contact clean or dry, and then have these wet, because then they'll actually want to stick together versus being ready to go in the engine and be able to work themselves apart. They'll, they'll want to like glaze up. If there's no oil on these, and now all of a sudden you spin them against each other, that oil wants to cook on there versus oil riding next to oil. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So even though a manual doesn't make a big deal about it, I want you guys to uh, uh, be considerate to uh, your soaking. Why are you soaking the fibers? Any idea? So that they can absorb all the oil. Yeah, because this is a this is a material that will actually absorb that. It okay. Expands a little bit too, maybe after it absorbs. That's where they tell about tell us about using a specific oil um, for the fact that it has. Uh, you know, additives in it that could swell a clutch. So some manufacturers will say you have to use the oil that we recommend or you will actually swell the clutch fibers. So I haven't seen it. Kawasaki does a unique thing too and I don't know if they're still doing it today but they take and they sell these plates in different thicknesses and what they do is they have you assemble your whole pack and then they have you measure the whole height of the pack and then they sell these in like a two point five millimeter or 2.6 or 2.7 millimeters so that you can actually fine tune your clutch pack to the right thickness that, that you desire or that they desire I should say. What would be the point of that? So that everything is using the most amount of travel and the most amount of uh, real estate if you will. If you can have the pack as thick as possible to have the most amount of fibers in there that would be ideal. Mm. What the strange thing about it, so I love your question, what's the point is when you, so if I got a Ninja, this one here, and these are Kawasaki plates, I have to measure the whole pack, I have to determine do I need a 2.6, a 2.7, or whatever thickness, 
And if I order an aftermarket, like an EBC or a factory brand clutch, or you know anything I like, Parts Unlimited or uh, Tucker Rocky, <laughs> I get all the same plates. You know, it's every single one is just the, the same thickness, you know, unless it had a special offset one or something. So, um, just the way the factory does it different. Do you see how much uh, play there is here? Mm -hmm. You think yes. that's a problem? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that isn't good either. Pretty so this is, this is that one that I think is supposed to be offset. We'd have to look at the manual. But the one thing I definitely know is that uh, whether this is uh, an aftermarket clutch or whatnot, who knows how we got it, it's, it's not fitting in there. So for purposes of moving forward to get, um, get this done for the lesson how to do a clutch, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna end uh, with that. So now I've got... Okay. A lot of times you guys will uh, put these together. I don't know why somebody uh, was drawing an arrow on there, probably just trying to figure out how it rotated. I have to make sure that I'm engaged in the packs. That makes sense? If you forget this guy, you're going to end up starting all over. Robert, can you grab your uh, Allen's, your metric? What's that? I believe it's a five. You notice I'm just compressing the spring a little bit mm -hmm. just to get this started. Thank you. Okay. So, just the reason I decided just to keep going here was to make sure and have a review, like we did on our two strokes, that we want to make sure and install these in an even pattern. And so, for YouTube viewers, what we're talking about there you guys is that each one of these springs has amount of pressure that it gets to apply to this whole pack so the total pressure available will be a hundred percent right mm -hmm. yep. so what is each spring 25 25 so each one's 25 percent if I crank this one all the way down I'm probably gonna break that stud off on the inner hub because it's having to do a hundred percent of the job of what's going on and what happens is this plate wants to just break not the plate, I'm sorry, the inner hub that's underneath there. It's just the, the whole plate's gonna move and then put all that force on that stud that's down below. So we wanna take and literally just kiss these in, you know, get a nice even pattern. These really long springs here, I'm pretty sure are not stock on this. And notice I'm just going a little bit more each time. Now this is a six by one fastener, so my students, you guys, we uh, we talk about this all the time. So what's the torque? Six to nine. Six to nine is a real typical torque on that. Okay, so wh why is this so important, guys? Why don't you tell the world there? You know, why do we like to know a torque spec before we're even uh, putting a wrench on it? So we don't over tighten it. Right. Break it. There's a really big difference between six foot pounds and 15 foot pounds, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah. I mean, it's the diameter of the bolt really jumps up, right? So. We're just kissing these in nice and even. This is how we're going to get our clutch all together. And we don't break things doing it in this pattern. Your service manual might even actually tell you a, you know, a star pattern, a one, two, three, four, five, or something like that. But you know, once you have quite a bit of tension on the other ones, it doesn't get as critical. What the the big mistake is is taking one all the way out at a time you'll break that last stud or trying to install one you'll break the first one when we have this much tension on here uh it's really usually not a uh, not a problem but there's no uh, problem with just being consistent and still kissing this all the way down Oops. and then uh we'll be done is the clutch cover handy that one here i'll just take it real quick i'm just i'm not going to install it all the so get a torque wrench out, six pounds or whatnot. Yeah, you guys can see we're playing around on our cutaway here uh, to try and be able to show some of this. What my goal is, is to be able to allow us to have a handle on here where we can use the handle to open and close the clutch so that you can see the disengagement. But what I really want to focus on here is the fact that on this handle, what we're doing when I ins where people screw up is installing the clutch cover you have to have this unloaded and as I install it I want to basically ramp this around it's it's a, it's a it's a dual action 
uh, motion here. Does that make sense? So, and all you do, no hammers, no anything. You get it up on here, and I have two. I have a couple things that I'm trying to align and engage. I'm trying to grab this arm around the clutch piece here. But the other thing that we got to remember, guys, and there's one missing on this motor, is dowel pins. Okay, so I have to be intentional, and actually that other cutoff piece might have the dowel pin in it. I have to be realizing that I'm uh, having to uh, install, this goes like this. You can actually see how that's gonna engage. Oh, uh, move that arm just lightly back and forth, lightly, and then go the other way. So you can see when that's installed in the right position how that's gonna engage. I guess our cutaway just keeps getting cooler yet. Yeah, it does. All right. And let go. So everybody understand what my what my warning is. Be careful for uh, installing the clutch uh, rack and pinion and the dowel pins. If you miss that and you try cranking these bolts down, what are you going to do to the the flatness of this cover? Oh, you're warp, gonna warp, warp it. Yeah, you're going to warp it. You're going to fold <laughs> it right over and bend it, and you're going to have a bad day. So.